Hey guys, Karu Butena. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Maddie and I am a registered nurse um, with experience in the ICU and PACU. I love creating content for nurses, nursing students, and other healthcare workers. So I'm so glad that you found my channel. In today's video, I wanted to cover some of the best apps out there for nurses and nursing students alike. And of course, I wouldn't suggest an app if I hadn't already used it myself. So I hope that you guys get some use out of it and I will do my best to talk about the features and the reasons why I really love the app and why other people tend to like the app as well. I felt like this video could be helpful, especially because in our day and age, there are a lot of resources out there, but I wanted to take kind of some of the guesswork out of figuring out what works and what doesn't. And not only that, um, it's just nice to have resources to make our lives as nurses a little bit easier. Let's get right into it. All right, the first app that I want to talk to you guys about is the NIHSS app. This stands for National Institutes of National Institutes of Health Stroke Scale. Almost there. So, depending on where you work, most of us have to have an NIHSS um, stroke scale certification. So this is basically the checklist that you run through with a patient when you are assessing them post stroke or if you think that they are currently experiencing a stroke. This is something that I definitely had to use as a new grad nurse in the ICU and we would run rapid response teams. So basically this is a team of two to three nurses, usually from the ER, the ICU. Your house supervisor is typically there along with a physician that's on call and you go through a and you assess a patient. So a lot of the times, if it was a med search floor and their patient was like ha actively having a stroke, they would call the response team and we would be the ones in charge of doing the stroke scale, taking them to a CT scan, getting them evaluated with a provider, and then um, going from there to see what type of intervention we needed to do for the patient. The tricky part though is that there are a lot of things on that stroke scale and so it's hard to remember it off the top of your head and sometimes we had like a little sheet we could take with us to go over it and obviously if you're a well-seasoned nurse or you work in a neurotrauma department then it's going to probably come more easy to you but if you're like me and it doesn't come as easy then this stroke scale app literally all it is is just that checklist. So you start, it gives you the question prompts for the patient. This can be um, like asking the patient to lift an arm, hold it there, raise their eyebrows, squint their eyes as hard as they can, saying certain words and things that would lead you to believe that they have a stroke. And depending on how bad it is, you fill out that scale. So the app already has on it the prompts for each question and then it even has the picture chart that you're going to show a patient and as you go through it you can click buttons that calculate the score at the end so this was super helpful all right the next app that i have to suggest to you guys is the pill identifier and it does exactly what the name implies it helps you identify pills this is especially helpful if you are administering multiple medications to a patient at like once. And we've all had the incidents where grandma takes the cup and loses a couple pills either in the bed or they fall on the table, maybe even underneath the bed. Um, and then you don't find it until later. So then you don't know what grandma actually did or didn't take during your med pass. Hopefully you're watching your patient to find out, but it does happen. So basically you can take a picture of the pill or you can look at it and um, put in the description box what the pill looks like and it will help you identify the type of pill so that you can know whether or not it was their Lasix, um, so their diuretic, if it was their heart pill, if it was an aspirin and so on because there's no way most of us can know most of the pills but because they have certain colors, certain sizes and certain scorings on the front and the back, um, the pill identifier app helps you um, narrow it down and figure out which pill it is. All right, and the next app that we have to talk about is something that just kind of helps you plan your days, plan your schedules, and that is the Nurse Grid app. 
Um, so this apparently is especially helpful if you have more than one job in like the nursing realm. So you can see when your shifts are coming up for both jobs. And then if other people use the app, you can actually see who's working with you on um, those like days and shifts. So this would definitely be especially helpful if you need a good way of tracking and planning your shifts, knowing when you work, knowing when your next weekend's off, knowing what holidays are coming up and things like that. All right guys, and then the next resource that I wanna share with you all is Smartin. This is actually the sponsor for the video today and I can't wait to share with you guys what I love about this resource. Smartin provides NCLEX prep for nursing students and it also provides a nurse GPT, kind of like chat GPT, but for nurses and nursing students to look up questions and have it filtered through, which is especially helpful as opposed to just Googling something and wondering if it's coming from a um, like credited source. Okay, so just to give you guys a little insight as to what the Nurse GPT looks like, this is my first time using it. So I clicked on that I am a practicing nurse and then I chose the first question that seemed to correspond to what I was looking for. Um, so I'm a practicing nurse. What are some considerations for a patient with heart disease? And as you can see, it generates this response, just kind of like chat GPT would. And then you get a bunch of different considerations. This is great, especially if you're studying for something um, with regards to this topic and maybe you're a student. But since I'm a practicing nurse and I am not studying, I do need um, refreshers on what to consider for different types of patients. I don't always get the same type of patient in a setting. In this case, I wanted to basically just get a little bit deeper into consideration. So something that uh, I often forget is heart blocks. So the next thing that I look up is heart blocks. So that's what I'm gonna ask the chat box next. This just tells me all the different heart blocks, but I personally have a tough time differentiating between the two types of second degree heart blocks and knowing which one is more benign than the other. And this answer doesn't really give that to me. So then I type that into the chat box. So I'm going ahead and asking it to differentiate between um, a second degree heart block type one and type two, because somewhere in the back of my head, I know that there's a more profound difference between the two. So as it's generating a response, it actually gives me more than what the last response gave me because my last question was a little bit more broad and this is more narrow and I'm getting better at using it already. So I can already see that a type two, if my patient's having a type two, they might be more symptomatic and it is something that requires intervention um, more likely than a type one, which tends to be more benign and a patient can live with it long term um so that was a wonderful refresher the best part about smartin is that they are currently free not only do you have access to ways to prep for the NCLEX but you do have that <laughs> nurse GPT box that is free for use I think this would be especially helpful if you are a preceptor and want to look up questions for um, nursing students and new grad nurses or just new co-workers and don't just want to be googling every time and then even if you have a gap in the next time that you're learning something or it's been a while since you've covered a certain topic so it helps me relate information properly to the provider and know um, what level of importance you know like intervening for the situation is all right and the next app that i found super helpful and that i personally used while i was in nursing school was the Aprocatrice app especially during my pharmacology class so when you're learning all these new uh, medications their interactions what they do for the patient dosages it's not always super helpful to have this really fat heavy um, nursing drug guidebook, especially because the additions tend to get updated every year. And I personally don't want to have a stack of nursing drug handbooks lined up in my pod that I work with in the PACU or on my bookshelf at home. So having the app that's constantly being updated is super helpful. And I can just look things up um, at a much quicker pace, especially if I'm working with a new medication or it's been a while since I've administered a medication.
All right, and the last app that I have to recommend to you guys is the Pocket Labs app. This is especially helpful if you need a refresher on lab values, what is normal, abnormal, um, high values versus low values, and the common signs and symptoms that come with the corresponding lab values. For example, what would the signs and symptoms be of a high low blood white blood cell count, what could the issues be, do we need to think about sepsis, and so on. Even if, let's say, you have hypomagnesemia, that could lead to a cardiac uh, dysrhythmia, especially something like torsat. So what would you want to monitor in that sense? Um, at what level does it become an issue, and so on. Um, so yeah, I think that Pocket Labs is a wonderful app to have, especially if you are a new grad nurse and you're trying to keep all your lab values fresh in your mind. All right, and that is everything that I wanted to share with you guys. I hope that you found this video super helpful. If you use any of these apps, comment down below. Definitely check Smarten out if you haven't already and play with the chat GPT portion of it. I've had a lot of fun and just kind of like typing in questions and um, kind of teaching myself on the side. I definitely go down a lot of rabbit trails when I start with one question and the more questions you put into it, the more that the algorithm kind of figures out what um, answers you're looking for. Definitely don't forget to check them out and thank you again so much for watching today's video. I Again, I hope you guys found it helpful. Um, hit the subscribe button and like button if you did enjoy it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Tutuanana, I will see you all later.